Hi, I'm Andy from Incredible Edible Wakefield, and this is the 12th in our Stay Home, Grow Your Own tutorials, and today we're going to be sewing spinach. So, equipment we're going to need is marker pen or pencil, from labelling up, scissors for opening our seed packet, seeds we've got here, spinach perpetual, a nice variety that will grow through the winter. We're going to need either a watering can, or we use a, a water bottle, just with some holes, pin holes, about eight or nine in the top to use as watering. We're going to need either a small sieve, if you haven't got that, a little kitchen colander out of there with holes that sort of size is a good alternative. Containers to plant into, this is a cut down bedding plant tray. But what we could also use is these are water bottles cut down to about two inches and just carefully put some drainage holes in the bottom with scissors. We could also do something similar with yogurt pots or any small container. But we only want it about two inches, about 50 mil deep because and the little seedlings roots are at the top there and the water's at the bottom. If the pot's too deep, the roots can't get down to where the moisture's at the knee. We're going to need a saucer to sit those in just to catch the runoff water. It's just a meat tray we're going to use for that. No holes in that one. Labels. So, if a lollipop sticks, or here we've used the bottom of quite out of an ice cream tub to make some plant labels there. The interesting thing I find with spinach, which is similar to beetroot, we planted our spinach out last week, unfortunately, so um, I'm going to show you, but beetroot is the same growing habit. So, we did these a few weeks ago. As you can see, we did one seed in each module, but the interesting thing about spinach and beetroot is that each seed is actually a multiple. So, you can plant just one seed. Sometimes they won't germinate at all, like this one. Sometimes we'll end up with two seedlings, as you can see here. Sometimes we'll end up with three. And they don't even necessarily all germinate at the same time. So we've got one fairly large plant there. Two really small seedlings that have come up next to it. So what we can do is once we get to that sort of size, we do this using a, a fish and chip fork, any little dibber or small implement like that. We'll hold in the leaves rather than the stem. We'll gently tease out the second seedling and replant that using the dibber there. It's quite a long tap root on these. You can see from this, Still a small plant, but that's how big the root is already. Uh, some of these smaller ones, within a couple of weeks, we can replant one of those, pop that in there, put the root in, and just gently pass it down and close around it, and we can replant those. So by the time we're planting out, we should end up with one plant in each module. So to get started, we get our bedding plant tray or container. We'll cover that with compost first of all, and up to the top. We need the compost to be fairly compact. Because when the plant starts to get its roots down, if it's too loose, the gaps between the modules of, and the cells of the compost, and the plant can't get into contact with them and draw up the moisture and the nutrients it needs. So I'm using my fingers just to firm those down, not too hard, but just gentle pressure, and make sure that all six of those can add a little bit more to that one. Nice, fairly level surface. Take the seeds. Next, we get our seed packet. Give them a tap, make sure they're at the bottom. And these seeds are medium size so we can put these out onto our hands and it's thick so you can also see there one seed actually in there is a multiple so gently put one of those in the centre of each cell I'm going to lay them all out first before I start covering them in compost it's very easy to lose track of where you are and end up not knowing whether you've put a seed in a cell or not and what I'm going to do I'm going to get my sieve on my colander I'm going to Break up some compost then to put that off. We want them about the same amount of seed as the depth of the seed itself. This is only a couple of mil deep, so we don't want more than a couple of millimetres of compost on it. Give it that shape. We'll leave the big lumps in there then, and we'll just get nice fine compost. It's just gently covering it up. So it's in darkness. It knows it's ready to start growing. It's just enough that when we water as well, it's not necessarily going to wash all the water away. We need to add our label. Some people like to also add the date, so that if they do a lot of sowing, they can tell if something's not germinated, if it's been too long. So now we're going to sit this into our saucer, and we're going to give it a bit of a water using our water bottle, as I say, pinholes picked in the top of there. Sometimes best to start watering away from it, so you can see what sort of spray you've got, and then come back to it. But we'll give them a nice dousing to start with, it's a nice gentle stream of water we've got here, which when you're watering your seedlings later on is really useful. So nothing worse than using a large watering can and drowning them. So you can gauge how much water you're going to have there. 
and giving us a good soak through to start with because it's the water is getting drawn into the feed along with a nice warm windowsill uh, that's going to tell the feed that it's a good time to start growing, growing and germinating. I'm going to keep this moist for the first couple of days or until we see the seed seedlings start to germinate. We don't want them sitting in water because the seedling can actually drown if it's sat in water. Uh, all the oxygen within the water that the seedling needs will get used up quite quickly and then they can literally drown. So we don't want it sitting in water, we just want it nice and damp continuously until uh, it decides it's going to germinate. So I hope that's been useful to you. That's been our Stay Home Grow Your Own tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.